Welcome back to another video. My name is Sean and I'm a registered dietitian. Today we are going to be doing a nutrition support calculation on a patient here. I've written down some data points that might be of interest to us when we're doing these calculations. I'll walk you through sort of how I analyze the patient and my recommendations for them. So real quick, we have an ICU patient. They came in with a heart attack. They're intubated. Their current weight is 97.5 kilograms, but their ideal body weight is 59.1 kilograms. I took the vent data as well as their T max, their height and their weight and their gender. I used the Penn State equation and calculated out to 1732 kcals. Remember, the Penn State equation does not need to be modified for stress or activity factors. I've decided a good protein number for them is going to be 70 to 75 grams per day, which is roughly 1.2 grams per kilogram ideal body weight. Their potassium currently is 5.9, which is elevated. Anything above 5 is considered high. However, this is in the setting of acute kidney injury. This person does have uh, chronic kidney disease stage 3, but they're not in uh, renal failure currently. Uh, no dialysis is currently indicated. They do have a balloon pump to help with blood pressures. They're only on one presser, leave a fed, and their MAP is greater than 60. Their mean arterial pressure is greater than 60, which means that they have a good perfusion in their gut tissues to feed. Uh, we don't have to worry about blood pressure issues right now, although it could be artificially, it's artificially elevated from the presser and I believe the balloon pump as well. Um, however, it's still at a really good value. So they are on propofol, but per discussion with the nurse, they think that they will be weaning off of the propofol and choosing a different, uh, a different sedative that does not have any calories. So looking at a patient like this, um, the uh, one thing that concerns me here is this potassium is a little elevated. They're not currently on dialysis, but they're not sure if they're going to need dialysis. So the question is, do we use a renal specific formula or not? So I've decided with this patient, I'm probably not going to use a renal specific formula. They're not in kidney failure currently. Uh, their potassium is trending down and it is not in the setting of end-stage renal disease. If the dietitian at follow-up uh, goes to see the patient and they are on dialysis, they can always switch over the formula. So I'm going to run the numbers here for a non-renal formula and then I'm also going to run the numbers for a renal formula. That way when the dietitian who's following up with me uh, if they need to switch the formula to a renal specific formula, they'll have the calculations already completed. So using our formulary here, the other thing that came to mind was their protein and their calories. Their protein, their calories are quite high given their protein intake and they're not on propofol. A lot of these, um, ICU specific formulas are typically low to moderate in calories and high in protein because they're assuming that a lot of those calories will be met with propofol. However, this patient is, will be weaned off of propofol, so it's going to be challenging to get a high calorie, moderate to low protein formula that's ICU specific. But let's just run the numbers here. We're going to take a look at vital AF. This is a 1.2 cal formula, meaning for every liter, it's got 1,200 kcals. It's got 75 grams of protein and 811 mils of free water. So let's go ahead and figure out what a volume-based tube feed would look like for this patient. So what you do is you take their calorie needs, uh, 1732 divide by the concentration and you'll get 1732 divided by 1.2 you're going to get 1443 mils per day now with the volume based tube feeding we do that on increments of 50 mils so we're going to round up 
to 1450 mils per day. Now what you could do is you can take this number here, you can divide by a thousand to get your multiplier. So it'll be 1.443 liters per day. And then you can multiply this by the protein here to figure out if this formula meets their protein needs. Now I already know looking at it, it's gonna be high in protein, but 1.443 times 75 gives us a protein of 108. So uh, this formula will meet their calorie needs. It will overshoot their protein by quite a bit, by 30 plus grams. Uh, however, my thinking is this, even though their ideal body weight, which is what the protein was decided on, was 59.1, their actual body weight is closer to 100 kilos. So this, one point, this 108 grams of protein is actually 1.1 gram per kilogram current weight. So even though it's high in protein, it's more, it's most likely it's more than what they actually need. Um, it's not super high given the fact that uh, it, if you use their current weight. So what we'll do is we will erase this. So we've double checked the math to make sure that this formula will indeed meet their uh, protein needs given their calorie needs. So we're doing a volume-based tube feeding. So this is the volume that they'll get per day. Cool, so now we know how much they're gonna be getting. What calorie protein and water provisions does that provide? So we will take, um, we will take this 1450 and we can just divide sorry this isn't doesn't write very well after i erase we'll take this in liters which is going to be 1.4 liters per day and then we'll just multiply that by each of these numbers so 1.45 times 1200 gives us I'm gonna have to switch pens here, sorry guys. At some point that pen's gonna bite the dust. So what you do is you take their liter per day, that's your multiplier, how many liters per day of formula will that patient get? So you multiply this by 1.45, multiply this by 1.45, you multiply this by 1.45. So what that'll give us is 1200 times 1 1.45, 1740 calories, 109 grams of protein, and 1176 mils of free water. So that's what um, we'll put in our RD note. Now, so the next part of the equation is going to be looking at NEPRO. Now, before we look at that math, real quick, on our formulary, it tells us how much potassium per liter is in these bottles. So for these patients that do have elevated potassium, I will do the math to figure out how much potassium they'll get from these formulas. So vital AF, if we give this patient 1.5 liters, we'll give them about 2,300 milligrams per day of potassium. Typically for our renal patients, we wanna keep it to around 2,000 or less. This is a little bit above that, but it's not bad. If we see that this potassium is creeping up, then I'll definitely choose a formula that's lower in potassium. However, that is just a nice little um, detail to look at. So looking at NEPRO, this is our renal specific formula. It's gonna be a higher concentration because typically with dialysis, they're taking fluid off the patient. And so you don't wanna be fluid overloading them with a lower concentration formula. So NEPRO is gonna be a higher concentration formula, which means it has more calories. It's got quite a bit of protein too, 
but it's certainly not as high in protein as some of the other ICU specific formulas. Now interestingly enough, one liter of Nepro gives 1770 calories, 81 grams of protein, which is exactly what our, our hypothetical patient here needs. Uh, right here, Penn State, so 1732, 1770, and then 75 grams of protein, 81 grams of protein, nearly identical. So the nice thing about this is the math is already done for us. If we're gonna do a volume-based VBTF, a volume-based tube feeding with Nepro, they'll just get 1,000 milliliters per day, and then uh, this is what it'll provide. So hopefully you found some help in this uh, math. If you have any questions, post them down below. If you appreciate this content and are getting value of it, uh, feel free to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, shoot me a nice comment down below. I do stay late at work to make these videos for you. So thank you again for watching and stay tuned for the next episode. Cheers.